Hi, I'm Saren. And I'm Ray. We're your spider baby hosts from To Know Her Is To Fear Her, a Spider Woman podcast, as well as proud members of the collective. You're listening to Capes and Lunatics. Gimme, gimme. Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Don't miss out on our comic book creator interviews, including our monthly Chichester chats with comic book legend D.G. Chichester, superhero movie brackets in our search for the worst comic book movie of all time, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. This is Luca Parrish, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. The recording has started. In a world of capes and lunatics, of gods and monsters, there are threats so great no one hero alone can face them. In those times shall rise a team of Avengers, and this is Avengers Declassified. I'm your host, Charlie, the Professor Esser, and with me, as always, is the Blue-Eyed Bomber from the Burger Pits. Phil Podcast Parish. Welcome, Podcast. Glad you're here. As always, tonight's episode, so we are talking Captain America 319, 320, 321, and that was enough. We're also talking 320. <laughs> Yeah, it's basically two different stories. Yeah, two two-parters, though. Yeah, two two-parters, but, you know, they do blend nicely together. And uh, we get to see uh, a friend here, uh, eventually, who might become a little more than a friend. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And uh, at least she's trying, man. She's trying. Um, <laughs> what is this, backlash? Is who uh, Cap's fighting in this? Who's just like... He's freaked out, man. He said, man, he got the melter. The melter, man. Well, here, I am not- well, here you want me to do a synopsis? Even though it doesn't really, oh, yeah. it doesn't have everything in it, but. Uh, Give me the story. Give me the story, Captain. All right. Uh, all right. So, yeah, this first one is Captain America 319 from July 1986. Overkill by writer Mark Grunwald. Penciler Paul Neary, anchor Dennis Jank, uh, colorist Ken Fedunowitz, uh, letterer Diane Albers, and editor Michael Carlin and Bobby Chase. Uh, Alright, yes, Blacklash is making jewelry heists in order to support his mom when Captain America defeats him and finds out that the Melter had been recently killed. He links- I was just going to say, I, I like how they're always, you know, they're, they're, they're stealing, but, you know, to support their mom. Yeah. Because their mom likes diamonds, you know. I know. He he links this with the attack on the Constrictor by Scourge and sets out to learn more. Meanwhile, back at Serpent Society headquarters, Sidewander teleports in with the dead body of Death Adder and swears revenge on whoever killed him, which is who is also Scourge. Uh, and again, this whole, this synopsis doesn't mention, uh, Cap going, trying to track down Scourge, so he goes to see Full Killer, trying to make sure that it's, it's he's not Scourge, and that's when he finds Diamond back, and mm-hmm. she said, she, uh, volunteers to work with him until she's just like, uh. Until she, well, we'll get to that, we'll get to that point. All right, yeah. yes, 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 but then, she, <laughs> once they laid, she gets shot, because a farmer thought she was a Martian coming out of a UFO. Yeah, well, you know, you got to, Phil, if you had a nickel for every time a freaking scroll cow came on your land. Not true. You know, it's, it, it's not like he's like, ooh, overreacting. <laughs> it's like, do you know how many scroll invasions we've had this week, this week, Captain America? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's uh, not the Krees, it's the scrolls, or it's the bad dude. It's one of those guys. <laughs> Then at the bar with no name, Gil- Gary Gilbert, also known as Firebrand, is meeting with two other costume villains, Jaguar and Letha, to discuss a mass meeting about how to deal with Scourge. As Captain America follows his leads and hunches, the meeting of supervillains starts. When they are in the heat of their discussions, the bartender, who happens to be Scourge, then jumps out from behind the bar and kills... Spoilers! I know. Well, yeah, for a... Okay, I guess so. For an almost 40-year-old comic, yes. <laughs> Uh, yes, from the and kills everyone there, exclaiming, Justice is served! Yeah, yes, you do. Um, 
But yeah, we kind of get like a quick origin of Diamondback. It's not the full origin because we'll learn years later that Crossbones is kind of tied in there. So yeah, well, you know, they they added stuff in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Remember, this was this is before Crossbones was a guy. You mm-hmm. know, it's, let's all let's all remember way back when. Yeah, Crossbones um, wasn't a character. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I love Diamondback in this. I love how. How she's just like pretty cool, man. It's like, look, I got no problem with the Avengers. We're we're at most we're from we're not enemies. We're from competing mm-hmm. organizations, you know. You know, and quite frankly, I'm sure she's very happy when the Avengers go, you know, fight Galactus or some nonsense. You know, <laughs> they're, they're not looking. You know, the, the Avengers are almost never just trying to stop jewel thieves. You know. Yeah. That's what the police are for, you know. This is, you know, you you have superhumans for superhuman crimes, you know. And if you're just a regular old costume jewel thief, that's not really their their business, you know. But but we but we but we digress. But I, I mean, I, I yeah, that was interesting. The whole in the beginning with Black Lash because he's like, oh yeah, I'm stealing to support my, you know, set us some money away from my mom. Cause he's like, I'm probably gonna be dead anyway soon here because you know the Melter's dead. I mean, they, I think they did this in a lot of the Marvel books at the time. You know, there was at least an issue of everyone's book where some, like, D-list villains getting were getting killed and Scourge would always show up in disguise like he did here as the bartender. Because there's even a story a few years from now. Is it, is it Deadly Foes of Spider-Man? It's like, Shocker is, like, scared to death that Scourge is going to come and kill him, even in, like, prison. Mm-hmm. So, like, he at the end, he, like, kind of, like, he says he's going to run to South America, but then... There's a Spider-Man issue like a year later where he's like, I don't have no money to get South America. He's like, I gotta pull more jobs. Yeah, that's how it goes, you mm-hmm. know. But yeah, I do love the uh, the sexy Sirene. Um, but here, man, she is uh, that 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 latex does not does not uh, does not hide. Um, oh, yeah, I know. She, I know. They're in that serpent saucer. She drops the she drops the key down her shirt. She's like, you. She's like, she's like. <laughs> Give me a kiss, I'll, I'll uh, start it up, or you could search me, you know, yourself. And he's like, no, no, nope. Yeah, and, and not for nothing, uh, she was saying a little bit more than kiss me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I think that to start, yeah. Yeah, you know, she's just like, yeah, why don't you, why don't you sex me up, boy mm. And it's like, uh, no. <laughs> As they're dropping to the ground, and he's like, no, nah, I don't think you're going to throw your life away in a few fleeting moments of pleasure. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. And she's like, <laughs> cold fish you know anyway but yeah and that's that gets us to our end here where um and you know you said this is the bar with no name but it's clearly a diner so i don't know well I if it's this issue or the next one i think uh might be a water was her next one i think he says the cap he's like there's like a chain of these like across the country or something uh, or yeah, it's a franchise yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gotta pay you gotta pay in early to get the franchise that's that's the trick you see um, They're gonna look for a bar with no name and a bar, Charlie Azer. They disguised it as a diner. Yeah, I prefer the bar with no doors. But anyway, <laughs> so yeah, Water Wizard, he's attacking poor old Cap. Mm. And um, oh yeah, the next issue. And yeah. poor old Water Wizard, he's just like, man, I don't know what to do. I just need you to help, man. Well, he's like, I wanted to make sure it was really you, Captain America. Yeah. Uh, it gets crazy, man. All, um, right. all these, all these, all these people are dying. Cops don't seem to be much help. Well, no, well, much. well, nobody knows who Scourge is. You know, nobody knows who Scourge is. Even Captain America can't track this down. Yeah. Although I will say this. It's, 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 oh, actually, give us the synopsis. <laughs> There's not much one of here, but okay. Uh, Captain America 320, August 1986. The, the Little Bang Theory. Uh, looks like the same team. Yeah, there's not a lot. There isn't a big synopsis here. Just uh, bu- 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 after it just says, after discovering the massacre at the bar of no name, Captain America hatches a plot to catch the scourge and stop his murder spree. So yeah, yeah. basically, yeah, Water Wizard brings you know he calls an anonymous tip to Captain America because he's like, you know what, I would have been one of these dead guys except I got a flat tire on my way here. Yeah, well, you know, not for nothing. Thank heavens for small favors. Oh, yeah. Um, I do love when we see the Scourge in the battle van and getting the contact from uh, one of her contacts or his contacts. Because he puts on a lady's face, mm-hmm. which I find... Well, remember at the end when Captain America takes the mask off, it is a guy, but he's like, oh, you're no one I've ever seen before. <laughs> exactly, because it's... You know what, Philip? It's not Scooby-Doo, man. 
cut off one head, two more takes their place. It's not Hydra. But, yeah, so... No, well, you know, Phil, we eventually do see, oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> they are associated with Hydra. Oh, yeah, way, way down the line. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it's much later, but I'm just saying. But, it, yeah, it's like with no leads, Captain America talks to the sheriff, you know, in charge of the... Uh, this massacre and says, you know, let me borrow one of these costumes, you know, don't tell anyone else, you know, because he dresses up as a mirage and they leaked that to the press that, oh, hey, one of the one of these villains escaped uh, getting shot. So when Scourge comes to get Scourge tries to kill Mirage, Captain America tries to ambush him, which he does. But then at the end, Scourge is killed by another Scourge. Yes. Well, I do love the fact that, again, in classic uh, superhero fashion, he is wearing his costume underneath the other costume yes hey man might be bulletproofing you know uh, yeah, to be fair you, you you do need that especially because you know look that's this guy's got guns um you know uh yeah it's it's it is uh <laughs> but yeah well, then we also see uh cobra come get diamond back out of the hospital and you know <laughs> yeah. scorch shows up and like takes a shot at the saucers uh the, the serpent saucers are taken off in time impact. Shouldn't we investigate? Cobra's like, no, 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 no. We're going to get killed. Let's go get reinforcements. Yeah. You really got it. You really got it oh, at yeah. this point. Um, I do, you know, I find it interesting that he's like waiting there. And then, and again, just it's that weird thing where he just takes off the costume um, to go after the scourge. So that's interesting. Um, but I do like it, you know, he's sitting in that cab and he's like, man, I got a lot of time to kill. Might as well, uh, finish up my assignment, uh, drawing the Captain America comic book for Marvel Comics. <laughs> That's how they get you, Philip. I do remember this period. Yes. He, he got a job at Marvel Comics. First, they offered him the Iron Man comic. He says, no, he's like, can I do Captain America? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my, oh, my. It's, it, it's an interesting book to say the least. Mm. Um, but I love how the cover uh, like promises the climax to this year long story. I mean, meanwhile, it's just you know one killer gets killed by another, and the mystery yeah. continues. Well, I mean that is pretty much how it goes, you know. Mm. Um, uh, I think, think they're like we have another hobgoblin mystery on our hands. Keep it going. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, that's the end of that one, um, and that brings us. I mean, actually, I, I am curious. Do they actually do? Another story um, to review in 320, or what is this? Oh, no, no, face-to-face -face with this. The, oh, no, that is 320. That's what yeah, I yeah. read. Sorry, 321. That's... No, oh, yeah, this is the one with the cover. The cover. Yes. The cover that dare not speak its name. Um, and a very controversial cover, one might point out, because this gets us to Cap basically saying... Ultimately misleading, yes. Yeah, I well, that, you know... He's never killed before. Yes, he has. I yeah. I think that th this was a controversy raging in the uh, letters column for a long time, and I think they were basically like, "Okay, okay, he meant it not in wartime. He never killed when it wasn't wartime." Yeah. Well, and you know, he, he doesn't kill unless he has to. Yeah. And he really the whole picking up the gun. I mean, honestly, I think they could have looked into that a little a little bit better. I'll be honest with you. I felt that 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 whole story beat fell flat. Mm. To me, because it just seemed like he was, you know, he did something, he made a choice, and now he's going to be all, all, all regretty about it. And it's just like, I, I don't know, man, it, it, it just doesn't read true to me um, in the way they, that they explore the story. Um, what did you think, Philip? I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I get what you're saying, because, yeah, kids, uh, Flag Smasher's back, he takes in a uh, 747 full of passengers hostage, and, uh, yes, he demands Captain America surrender himself, but Cap tries to uh, find them and free them before, yes, the deadline hits, and he does, but then they're being held in, what, an old monastery, like a big, big church with, like, three guards. He manages to take out, like, one, most of the, most of the guards, uh, there's, like, two left, and he's like, you know, I can whip my shield at one of them. He's like, I'm gonna take the one out further away, but then the one closer just starts mowing down, you know, starts shooting into the crowd, so Captain America has, no shield has to pick up a gun and shoot the guy dead, so. 
Yeah, and he does. Mm -hmm. He does what anyone would do when you're faced with that unwinnable situation. I mean, I I get it. The captain of this era, I mean, he would be more tortured by this. But it's like, I don't know, you have to go with the logic. Someone's going to die. Would you rather it's a couple innocent hostages or one guy who, by his choice, is here? Yeah. Shooting people. You know, I would have much preferred this with the two guards if Cap tried to de-escalate it. Yes. That would have been better. If he had just walked in and said, let's relax, let's talk about this. What do you guys want? You know, and did that. I got to give a big shout out to Hiram's mom. Oh, yeah. Hiram's mom has got it going. She made she made Cap a freaking turkey and apple pie. She is laying it on thick, man. <laughs> you know, if you were to look exactly like Valerie Bertinelli, too, I'm going to just throw that out there. Or, or like Bernie in that candle light. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. Um, Cap has a type. What can you say? Um, and Cap is feeling it. I, I feel like he's feeling it. I don't know. Well, I Maybe mean, he, he, he is lonely. I mean, Bernie broke up with him when she went back to, when she went to law school. So, I mean, you know. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it's 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 an interesting thing. I think I want to know what Hiram's doing now. I know. Have we revisited him recent have we revisited him recently? No, yes. no, since they dropped that hotline thing I, by the 90s. Yeah, I don't think we've ever seen Hiram again. Yeah, well, he's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. But everyone calls him Ram. Yeah. Cuz it's high Ram cuz his random access memory <laughs> is high. <laughs> yes, cuz his and his buddy, his uh, online buddies, yeah. Uh, Take care of Cap's hotline for him, and you know, yeah. prioritize stuff. And but you know, it's kind of interesting, especially when you look at this character. Then you see who, um, what's his name? Uh, oh, Rick Jones eventually becomes the character. Mm-hmm. You know, it's that same kind of you know hacker guy. Um, you know, um, it is interesting the story we get, and then of course it ends up after it with that but then we get uh, the final issue in this yes which is uh, captain america versus the flag smasher and yeah. it's you yeah know, i mean basically shield comes in the mop up flag smasher tries to get away in a copter while cap tries to stop him they both crash you know in, the, in the, like a middle of a blizzard yeah and cap saves his life oh yeah yeah that you mean, know yeah. huddles with him in the heat you have him reliving when he actually went into the ice mm-hmm. and all that stuff and he basically you know takes Flag Smasher out and brings him to, to safety, you know? Mm-hmm. So I could let you die, but I didn't, you know? I know Flag Smasher's like, I wouldn't have saved you. <laughs> well, of course not. That Which is kind of sad. Yeah. Because really, you know, Flag Smasher, eh, you know, uh, like it, it's this argument that he's a pacifist, but he needs to, like, the only way to stop war between nations is to destroy all nations. <laughs> Oh yeah, he wants. Yeah, he thinks national boundaries and stuff like that. Yes, uh, yeah. are bad. And, and Captain America's like, you know what? You might have some good ideals, but it's just your execution. You know, it's just, oh hey, he took a he, he took some plane full of people hostage. It's like, well, your execution leaves a little something to be desired. Yeah, uh, you know, but that was you know not for nothing. That's kind of indicative for the era. You know, where just you know you get a costume guy and they just wouldn't. Like, they, they would have what seemed like a noble motive, but it always falls apart at the end, you know? You know? Uh, but, yeah. So, that was that was these four issues, Philip. Yes. Yeah, yes. I, and I don't know if you remember when we did the John Walker stuff, but Flag Smasher returns in that, and, you know, Steve, mm-hmm. Steve shows up in that black suit, and he says... He says, how do I know you're the real Captain America? What's the last thing I ever said to you? And Steve says, you know, you, you said, oh, you're going to live the regret saving me, which he said at the end of this last issue. Yeah. There you go. Uh, brilliant. Okay. Um, so, you want to talk? Um, well, you know, let's let's keep it light. Let's talk uh, She-Hulk. All right. All right. She is a Hulk. Um... Fancy dress and cake Wednesdays. With Patsy, yes. With Patsy. Oh, I love that, by the way. And I do love Patsy being just uh, a sweetheart in this. And, you know, also being in continuity. You know, just saying, yeah, you know, I could have just asked Tony for this. He would have given it to you. To you. It's not like it's top secret or anything. But, you know. Uh, and then you've got a very interesting interplay between Mallory Book 
and She Hulk, mm. and Awesome Andy, and um, actually, wait, do we get Kurt Wagner at this point, or is he later in the story? I mean, he's when she when she comes oh, back is, from yeah. from yeah with Pat's yeah, yeah Kurt's waiting yeah, in the he, office. When, yeah. So he comes in, says, "Oh, were you at Fancy Dress and Cake Wednesday?" You know that you know Beast was always down for, it, but Namor was not having it. But you basically get to the point where um, Mary is just like, that's a lot of, you know, where she's very mad about, I don't want to be dealing with superhumans. I don't want all this. And then it's like, is, then why did you hire me of all people? You know, what was your thinking on this? And then she's like, you know. I know. I, I love it. It's like, I don't want any of this superhero stuff. I signed all of Krakoa. <laughs> yeah. And for what it's worth, it's like, Okay, that's that's a lot of money. That is a, a lot of money. An entire island nation, yes. Yeah, you know, like and half those people are wanted for something. Um, I like I like when we go back and see, meet Jack Jack Hearts again, and you know she. He, I like Jack Hearts is so chill, and I really appreciate that about Jack. And I do like the fact that Jen, you know, recognizes that she needs to be a hero. Like she doesn't, she hasn't really stopped being a hero. Uh-huh. Ever and then they shoot up and um, <laughs> I like that. I, I, there's so many aspects of this that I really enjoy. I like the fact that she is having a healthy relationship for once, if you will, uh-huh. and I think that's good. I mean, it's it's nice that she cares about him because it seems like no one else does. Because yeah, like Patsy's like, oh yeah, you wanted the information on Jack of Hearts. She's like, yeah, no one's gonna care if you take this thing, this thing, and even like when. Later on, Jack says, you know, I still have access to all my money because nobody even bothered to declare me dead or anything. Yeah. Yeah, that's how it goes sometimes. I mean, at least, it, I mean, it's it's easier for him, but uh, yeah, it's like, you know. Uh, you got a, a book to toss out? Um, Yeah. Uh, all Out Avengers number one came out this week. Yes. How was that? It's interesting because, yeah, they, cut, they literally like jump in in like the middle of a story like they're fighting this. So, like, a queen or something from another dimension. She's, like, taking over Captain Marvel. So, like, we get, like, a big Captain Captain Marvel 4 fight in here. Uh, then, meanwhile, Spider-Woman, Captain America, and Blade are, like, trying to storm the bridge of this ship. Oh, yeah, Spider-Man and Black Panther show up. I mean, it, it's pretty much not, again, again, all out, you know. It's all out Avengers. Action. And, yeah, we jump in in the middle of this story. Uh and they seem to beat these aliens, which I'm assuming is that going to be the last. Again, it's abrupt beginning, abrupt ending. I'm like, is that all we're going to do? Because next issue, we see uh, a certain college dropout on the cover. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, but it's so. it, but it's interesting because it's like they uh, in the letters pages. Uh, is this the writer or the artist? One of them is. Uh, Oh, Tom. Yeah, Tom Brevoort uh, was saying, you know, it's it kind of harkens back to the days, you know, you know, remember like when we were kids, we really didn't have access to comic shops and stuff. It was all spinner racks and stuff. So it's like you could walk into the store and, you know, whatever issue pick up, you could be in. The, you could start in the middle of a story and not know how, you know, except for whatever summary they give you, not know how it started or. Mm-hmm. And I guess that it's in the tradition of that. They're just like, oh, yeah, don't worry about the beginning. We'll just drop you in the middle and explain what you need along the way. And. I mean, I'm here for it. That that sounds fun. Yeah, no, it's it's interesting. No, yeah, I'm I'm here for the second issue, so. Okay, that sounds awesome. Um, do you want to do Captain America, or do you want me to do Spider Man 2099? Oh, um, no, go ahead, do Spider Man 2099. Yeah, so Spider Man 2099. Um, it is the conclusion of the Goblin Saga. Eventually, we got to the fact that it's a goblin. Um. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know, and it is effectively, they are trying to defeat the Goblin. Goblin has his black card that gives him uh, the ability to, I don't know, get access to things. Um, and it's still Norman. I'm just, you know. Oh, I love that. And I love just how he managed to stay alive. Oh, I've been basically draining the blood from anyone who was even remotely related to me just to stay alive. Ha ha ha. Um, so that's pretty messed up, to be sure. Um, and, you know, at the end, the Avengers do assemble. Da, 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 they're back, kids. Including Hulk 2099. Love my Hulk 2099. Yes. Um, you know, and the Moon Knight 2099, and... 
Who is that person? Was that uh, Union Jack? I don't know. There's a lot of people here. You got the new Captain America, the new full time. It, lo lots of awesome, cool characters. Uh, they all team up. They all defeat the Galactic Goblin. Who uh, does he die at the end of this? You pull it, but you built heaven on earth, but you don't own it. Leave a leave us leave us a few night. This garden needs fertilizing. Oy vey. Uh you're done goblin, crew's done, painless, friendless, and hopeless. Welcome to twenty ninety nine. Welcome. And then I do like that we have uh what's your name? Uh the watcher's wife or I'm sorry, the watcher watcher's partner. Yes. Uh, who has taken over for uh for him. Oh, and of course uh Osborne's behind bars, so you know, that's yeah. gonna hold him. And he'll never get out. Yeah, I know. He'll never ever get out again. And Spider Man twenty ninety nine goes off goes off a swing in. Yay. There's no time like the present. Uh, that was a fun book. I enjoyed it. Oh yeah, that was good. Okay. Got another book you want to toss out, my friend? Um yeah, but I was gonna say before we get to Captain America, I got Black Panther number nine. Oh, how was that? Uh, it was good because uh basically this threat from issue one comes back. It's I don't know if it's supposed to be an alien or something from another dimension because it comes and like is apologizing the Avengers because it basically this the creatures I guess the closest Earth analogy is like their cattle were like just like tearing stuff up you know in this these in almost indestructible cattle were tearing stuff up and the guys like apologies apologies we didn't know we had to ask permission and the Avengers are like yeah you just need to leave Earth and he's like oh I don't, there's nowhere it's like no leave Earth so it disappears. And then it reappears. Oh, where did it reappear? But it, oh, in Texas, and and uh, the Avengers are like we told you to leave. And uh, yeah, they, like I said, these creatures are almost indestructible. They used Doctor Strange to stop them last time, but Stephen Strange is dead right now. So, dang that! But Strange being dead when you need him. But T'Challa is like, I think I can uh, duplicate uh, maybe like some of the mystic whatever Doctor Strange did because. He's like, I, you know, I recorded, you know, whatever, you know, the magic basically into a signal or something. And like Steve was like, you record us. He's like, no, no, no. Vibranium, like, you know, just the, it, vibranium of, of its I'm nature. What, wearing a lot of vibranium. Well, no, it says no. Vibranium doesn't record everything, but like, like signals and stuff. Like you can get like, you can like get a pattern of a signal off vibranium. So he calls Shuri and he's like, I need a quick and easy way to like duplicate this signal. Yes. So, uh. So right at the end, as the troll is about to do that, uh, they get ambushed. Like I don't know if this is another one of the aliens, Buffalo Soldier. Oh, Buffalo Soldier, that's an interesting character. Yeah. So, okay. yeah, a lot of wacky aliens, but no, this was good because yeah, you got the Avenger. You know, you got like Captain America, Thor, Captain Marvel in this. It was it was good. Okay. Well, I guess we'll get to Captain America number. Uh... I'm sorry, Captain America, Sentinel of Liberty. Yes, because remember, we have two books now. Yeah, Symbol of Truth and Sentinel of Liberty. And um, it's interesting because, and I almost kind of appreciate this in this whole thing, because the guy's following him, who is the new super soldier mech, and I, I love the fact that he is intentionally, you know, following him and, you know, making... You know, he's, he is, which honestly, from my perspective, it's interesting how he's playing it because he's clearly putting a lot of people, including this little kid, in danger if he knows he's being followed this whole time. But he also knows this guy's been following him for a while, and if he was going to attack, he's probably not going to attack um, to get him into this spot alone so that he can... Uh, Fight him. Oh, and I, I do love I do love the big burly union guy. Uh, he's fun. Um, and let's see here. Yes, we get the dark alley scene, and eventually, you know, he basically talks him out. And says, "Yeah, you know, I've been talking a lot, but I've been talking to you because everything you saw that was what was me trying to convince you of what we're doing here, and you can either be with me or against me." And the creature jumps down, and they fight for a bit. They have a little talky talk, and then he's like, "But you know what? Let's uh, let's work through it." And at the end of it, the monster befriends him, and they shake hands. 
and now they're ready to go against the bad guys alone, and they're like, oh, wow, that happened way quicker than we anticipated. Which means they did anticipate it happening, but it's happened a lot faster. <laughs> Which also tells me they really didn't anticipate it. Like, a lot of their plans that were kind of reliant on this, like, not happening here, uh, probably have gained a non. So, the revolution, I don't know who this guy is. I'm getting some Mad Thinker vibes. I don't know. Oh, the guy at the end? Yeah, the guy at the end. Oh, no. The revolution. Yeah. Yeah, no. I, I, it, I didn't know if that was a brand new guy. Is supposed to be a brand new guy, or... Yeah, well, I mean, he might he might be, no, I was your cousin Larry from, you know, from, remember from issue one, 102, I was Larry the whole time. Uh, so, yeah, so I don't know, yes, I don't know who it is, but it is someone, so. There's probably lots of Larrys, <laughs> but uh, moving right along. Oh, speaking of, uh, She-Hulk's father, cousin Larry. <laughs> oh, yeah, good old. I like, oh, by the way, I just gotta say, I did love the latest issue of She-Hulk. I love, I, I love when her dad comes in and says, what's the shovel for? He says, digging holes. That's all you need to know. <laughs> he's gonna bury the wrecking crew. <laughs> he's gonna bury whoever he's got it, you know. He used to be a cop, that's all I'm saying, Philip. Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, Sheriff Walters, yes. Yeah, he's a nice guy. He's a real sweetheart, but, you know. That was before you started talking smack about his daughter. And now he's like, well, you know, I think now. Talking smack? The, the Wrecking Crew tried to attack. Uh, they, they did attack her. Oh, yeah. No, that is true. Um, but they also talk smack at her as well. So it's like, you know, it, it, he he is not he is not one to be messed with. So he has he has staked his claim. So that's pretty cool. Um, I mean, the show's yeah. fun. I mean, I don't know what people's problem is. I like the show. It's been fun. I don't think anyone has a problem. Honestly, I, I think that people that have a problem with it either don't read comics. Yeah, I don't think they're going to read yeah, comics. Yeah, because it's like, oh, the Hulk should never be silly. It's like, have you ever read a Hulk comic? Uh, have you ever read a She-Hulk comic? Come on. Well, yeah, well, She-Hulk, yes, specifically. But, I mean, you know, Clown Hulk is a canonical personality of the Hulk. For goodness sakes, when the when the Hulk ran for away from the or No, it wasn't when he ran away from the Avengers, but when he was working in the circus, dressed as a clown... Pretending to be a robot. <laughs> like you do. Joe Fix at once literally called the blob John Goodman. Come on. <laughs> uh, that was cruel. That was needlessly cruel. Um, <laughs> if Deadpool but, did yeah. it, they would they would have eat up the twerking? Well, yeah. Oh, you know, and don't even get it's, it. That is just like the things people are picking on. It's You can tell this is someone who just doesn't know what they're talking about. And it's like... You know, unless you have a valid criticism, please go away. And, and again, I mean, you know, again, we've had we've had she humor in She-Hulk comics, and two, it's like, no offense, maybe Marvel's trying to bring in someone other than straight white men, you know? Yeah, or even just, yeah, look, I will say that I'm a relatively straight white male, and I like it too, you know, it's... This, they're trying to not have toxic fanboys. Is what no, is. and any successful business, you want to cater to as many people as pot. You know, trying to bring as many pe as many people. It doesn't matter, you know, who they are. Yeah, you know, that's the thing. It's like, uh, anyway, moving right along. Uh, let us move forward from here, uh, Philip, and let's talk uh, about uh, where people can help us out. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. So you know. Uh, would you like to give, give give us the information? Yes, I will do that. And even before that, let me pull up schedule. Do more Captain America issues next week. Uh, all right, kids. Here's schedule. Whatever opens. All right. Yes, next week we will be covering. Oh yes, Captain America three fifty seven through three sixty two. Children, the Bloodstone Hunt. <laughs> Yes. Uh, oh, oh, Zemo hires himself a crew. Do you know who one of the people in that crew is? Right? Don't you, Charlie Esser? Uh, was it a wrecker? Was it the wrecker? Or... Batroc Z Leaper! Oh, Batroc! Oh, I'm not going to forget. One of your favorites. It's crew, and I'm immediately thinking of, uh, Yeah, no, there's like oh, Zaran and Weapons Master, but yeah, no, one, yeah, one of them is Batroc Z Leaper. <laughs> he is just there for the law. <laughs> all right yeah. So, yeah so send your thoughts on that one kids that's a good one huh 
Uh, email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. And remember, you can uh, find Avengers Declassified on Facebook, on Twitter. Find links to all the various Marvel and DC shows we do. Uh, links to the YouTube channel uh, because everything we do gets a video. So smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any of it, including uh, all of the uh, guest hosts we've had for September. Smash it! And of course, the Patreon because again, we're paying for this out of our own pocket. Uh, it's a labor of love. Every little bit helps. The so 3 to $5 gets you early access to creator interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats. I got the good mic out for you guys. And Lil's Hellfire's favorite superhero movie brackets. We will find the worst superhero movie of all time. And you can also support us with Capes Lunatics and Capes Lunatics Sidekicks merchandise. Uh, find everything at Linktree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Capes and Lunatics. Charlie Esser. Well, if they'd like to write to me in that old-fashioned email way, the way our mothers and fathers wants to do so at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's super connectivity blog all one word at gmail.com and of course follow me on the twitter as i live tweet things when i feel like it uh at charlie esser that's c-h-a-r-l-i-e-e-s-s-c-r for the two e's in the middle for quality Bing. thank you Maz. all right and another day has come in another wrong has been avenged. You have listened to Avengers Declassified. This podcast will self-destruct in 10 seconds. Oh, and I also love that She-Hulk Wong got a new friend, Madison. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Two ends, oh. one Y, but not where you think it is. <laughs> can, we, can we talk about Cornelius Willows and how he knows the demon she made a deal with? Ooh. They dressed that guy to look like Monaco the Prince of Magic. <laughs> Didn't say it was Monaco the Prince of Magic. Oh, that was totally Monaco the Prince of Magic. And Donnie Blaze. Oh, God. <laughs> we love Donnie. He's a frat boy. Hi. I'm one of the high priests of Conchu Ray and I have the sacred privilege of providing you, the loony listener, with a podcast honouring Marvel's very own Moon Knight. So join me and a host of others at Into the Night, a Moon Knight podcast. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram or support the show by becoming a Patreon member. Into the Night, a Moon Knight podcast. It's time to get your conchu on.